Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. <laughs> if you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I know I complained before, but I'm on this new workout routine and my arms are so sore. I don't know what this muscle group is called on the back of your arm. It shows what I know about working out. But oh my gosh, it hurts to lift my arms any higher than here. But it's all for the gains, bro. Gains, bro. <laughs> This is a video that has been requested by you guys many, many, many times over the course of the last, I don't know, like six months. And I saw a buzz in, in the comment section, but it wasn't until my last previous videos where this video request was becoming the top like comment that I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I should make it. I'm gonna be talking about layering active ingredients, which ones you can mix together, which ones you can't and how to do it. Now, normally these types of videos aren't really my thing because there's already so many amazing other creators and dermatologists who create videos about these topics, going into depth about active ingredients, how to use skincare, how to layer it, all those things, and I want you guys to support them. But because I do talk about active ingredients so much on my channel, and because there is sometimes a risk associated with how many actives you use and how you layer them, I thought, why not make this video talking about it? So get out your notebooks, girls and boys, because we getting smart. Does anyone know what that accent was? Not me. I also want to say that this video is thankfully sponsored by a brand that I've been so excited to talk to you guys about. And some of you guys may have seen it in some of my videos, Notorium. Notorium is exploding onto the skincare scene and I'm honestly so happy to see it because they have a skincare philosophy that is very similar to my own. They focus on basic active ingredients with high quality formulas at a low price point, but altogether very well-rounded formulas. You guys know that I'm always making recommendations for skincare products that are very simple, very cheap, because I know that a lot of you you guys may not have the money to be able to afford really expensive skincare products and I want to make sure that no one is left out. But sometimes when it comes to very basic simple skincare, you're missing out on some really incredible additive ingredients that can really up the performance of the product. And I feel like Notorium has found like that perfect spot in between to where it's high quality formulas with a lot of beneficial ingredients but still simple and affordable. Honestly, I've seen so many of you guys asking me about Notorium because Susan Yara and other skincare creators have talked so much about it and I've been trying out the product for about a month now and I'm still making my way through some of them but <sighs> some of them I absolutely love. I thought it would be perfect to include Notorium in this video because they are a brand that is hyper-focused on actives in order to illustrate what actives are, how to use them, and how to layer them. Another thing I love about Notorium is that they are really, really committed to educating their customer base about ingredients and skincare. That is something that is so important to me and one thing that in the past made me so upset about the industry is that there's this widespread ignorance that people and companies can make money off of, which is why I love brands that are focused on educating their customer base about skincare ingredients so that you guys can make the best decisions for your skin because at the end of the day you know your skin best and inside all the notorium boxes you will find descriptions about the ingredients what the active does how it works how to use it what they don't formulate with it's honestly really really awesome and definitely made me really excited when i saw it because i was like yes education we need more of it so thank you so much to notorium for sponsoring this video if you guys are interested in purchasing any of the products that i recommend in today's video you can use the links in the description box below and thank you guys as always for being super supportive of my sponsorship so that i can partner with companies that have a similar skincare philosophy and focus and level of ethics that measure up to my standards. So thank you guys. Let's get into it. So first, let's bust some myths about layering actives. Now, Hiram, what the hell do you mean by layering actives? If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like to focus on specific ingredients that give really good benefits to your skin. And a lot of these are considered actives. So it's like your exfoliating ingredients, your niacinamide, your retinol, your vitamin C, your hyaluronic acid. All of these are actives. And while it's tempting to use as many as you can, there is somewhat of an order to the madness and some myths out there that need to just be <sighs> obliterated. The myth out there is that there's a lot of actives out there that you cannot mix no matter what. And that is just simply not true. When it comes to the world of skincare, there is rarely a black and white, a right and wrong. It's all dependent on percentages, dosages, what types of ingredients they are. There's so many different things to take into consideration. And the reality is, is that most actives you can mix. Now, does that mean it makes sense for your skin to mix a lot of actives? It depends. Everyone's skin is different. Some people's skin can handle a lot and some people's skin can't handle very much. But the most important thing, and this is something that I am constantly saying, just be careful and be gentle with your skin. Pay attention to what your skin is telling you. It is always better to be safe than sorry. And that's my approach with mixing actives. Do I think you can? Absolutely. But do I recommend you being careful about getting into it and being very deliberate about what you mix and put on your face? Definitely. I mean, that's what I'm constantly saying in my videos. Where have you been? No, I'm kidding. I know you guys have noticed. And that can literally apply to anything, not just mixing actives. But once you start to figure your skin out and what it wants, you can 
can really have a lot of fun mixing and making concoctions and experimenting with what your skin is going to enjoy the most. I've linked a lot of resources in the description box below to dermatologists, chemists, and estheticians who have talked about this and, and how most of them say that the rules about what you can and can't mix together are just a bunch of BS. Again, it comes down to your personal skincare experience and your opinion. Now I'm gonna first go over some popular active ingredients and then afterwards talk about which ones you can mix together and which ones you can't. Let's start off with one of my favorite ingredients in the world, if not my favorite ingredient, niacinamide. I constantly talk about niacinamide for the plethora of benefits that it has. It's great for people with sensitive skin because it reduces redness and sensitivity. It will also brighten the skin so any dark spots and hyperpigmentation that you have will be faded. It controls excess oiliness and sebum production within the skin, making it great for people with combination of oily skin, but it's well tolerated by all skin types and it's an ingredient that's very gentle but effective on the skin. Now niacinamide can be used in the daytime, it can be used in the nighttime, and you can layer it at any point in the skincare routine. It's just a very versatile ingredient, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. Now, if you guys have watched a few of my videos over the past month, you know that I've talked about this product before, but the Notorium Niacinamide 12% Serum is my favorite product from the line. It is so, so, so good. And a great alternative to a lot of other niacinamide serums that I've put out there, and it's slowly starting to become one of my favorites because of how lightweight it is. Niacinamide, the only downside of it is that sometimes it can leave a little bit of stickiness behind or feel a little bit heavy on the skin, but this one sinks into the skin so nicely and feels so lightweight. I honestly love the experience. I definitely see myself going through a lot of these. Salicylic acid or BHA. It is a great ingredient that I absolutely love, especially for people with acne prone or breakout prone skin. It goes deep into the pores and exfoliates all the dead skin and excess sebum and oil out of your pores to make sure that your pores are clean and healthy. BHA can be used every single day, but I recommend using it every other day because it is exfoliating your skin and I do think your skin needs a break from exfoliation. Retinol. This is arguably the best skincare ingredient available on the market because it has the most research backing it up. Retinol is amazing for repairing deep damage within the skin, whether you have acne scars, fine lines and aging, dark spots, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, scarring, or other problems, retinol will help resolve those issues. And it's kind of just considered the all-in-one product, like if you just want one product to get rid of all your problems, use a retinol. But retinol is a very tricky ingredient and can be sensitizing to the skin, which is why it's important to know what you should and shouldn't mix it with. Now, how do you apply retinol? I always recommend applying retinol at night because it will make your skin very sensitive to the sun during the day. And not only that, you just want it to perform best. And at nighttime is when a retinol can perform best. Retinol is an ingredient that you want to slowly introduce into your skincare routine once every two weeks and then up to once a week with a maximum of using it three times a week. Now, when you apply it, you always wanna make sure that your skin is dry when you put on a retinol because when you apply it on wet skin, it can actually make the retinol penetrate your skin even deeper, which is gonna overly sensitize your skin as well as excess flakiness. So that's why I always recommend making sure that your skin is completely dry before going in with a retinol treatment. Alpha hydroxies are amazing for getting rid of all the dead skin cells on the surface of your skin. And as opposed to beta hydroxy acid, they more so work on the top layer and really give you that extra glow, overall smooth skin. Alpha Hydroxys can be used in the daytime or the nighttime, and usually people say you can't use AHAs during the day because that's going to make your skin so sensitive to the sun, when in reality, just using AHAs in general is going to make your skin sensitive to the sun, whether or not you're using it at daytime or nighttime. But I personally recommend using them at nighttime because that's when they're able to be the most effective because your skin isn't going through all the trauma that it experiences every day. AHAs can be used every single day, but I personally recommend using them three to four times a week because you do want to give your skin a break from that intense exfoliation. Now, what about hyaluronic acid? That's a popular ingredient because it's a humectant. It draws in moisture from the environment into your skin to help hydrate and plump it. Honestly, hyaluronic acid, I'm not gonna go too deep into in this video because you can mix it with any of the active ingredients. Hyaluronic acid is technically an active treatment, but in reality, it's so well tolerated by a lot of skin types. It's not exfoliating or repairing any damage within the skin, which means it works well with pretty much any ingredient out there. My only recommendation is that if you do live in a dry climate and you have dry skin, I wouldn't recommend hyaluronic acid because it's supposed to draw moisture in from the air into your skin. And if there's no moisture in your environment and you already have dry skin, that's gonna pull moisture from deep in your skin and potentially make your skin even more dry. Does this mean hyaluronic acid is a bad ingredient? Absolutely not, but you just gotta be mindful of how you use it. And then we reach one of the final and most controversial ingredients for layering and mixing, vitamin C. Now vitamin C is known for its antioxidant benefits, being able to protect your skin during the day, brightening dark spots, preventing and decreasing aging within the skin. The specific one that I'm talking about is ascorbic acid, which is the ingredient that is the most researched. It is what vitamin C is. All other ingredients are technically not vitamin C. 
And in my opinion, if you are gonna go in with a vitamin C product, you should go in with ascorbic acid because that's the one that has all the research backing it up. Everything else is just kind of a question mark. Ascorbic acid is very unstable when exposed to light. And if you're not careful and you don't use it up quickly, it can brown, which means that the ingredient will turn and either become less effective or sensitizing for the face, which is not what you want. I mean, obviously, if you're gonna dish out the money for a vitamin C product, you want it to be effective. When you use it, make sure that it hasn't browned too much. Vitamin C products will typically have a little bit of like a light orange texture or a brown color coloring, but if it's dark brown, that means that the product has turned and it's not going to be as effective as it could be. And at that point, I honestly just recommend throwing it out and recycling the packaging because it's just not going to be effective. Now, vitamin C can be mixed with most actives. Lots of people will try and tell you that's false. From what multiple dermatologists and chemists have told me, you can. But personally, I don't recommend mixing vitamin C with other products unless it's specifically formulated as a mixture of multiple active ingredients. Let me explain. So Naturium has their vitamin C face oil. This one is primarily just focused on vitamin C with some other hydrating ingredients and it's going to work good for brightening the face, getting those benefits from vitamin C that you want. But it isn't mixed with any other active ingredients. And if you're using this one, I would recommend using it on its own without any other actives at the same time. That way you're making sure that you're getting the full benefits of the vitamin C and not risking any other active ingredients, potentially mixing and disabling the efficacy of the formula. If you are wanting to go in with other treatments, I think nighttime is a great time to be able to go in with those other like exfoliating and treatment ingredients and use this vitamin C product in the daytime. But you have other products from Notorium like their 22% serum, which is formulated with pineapple extract, papaya extract, and other mildly exfoliating ingredients, as well as one of the strongest products that they have, their vitamin C Super Serum Plus. This one has vitamin C, retinol, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and salicylic acid all in one product. Everyone who says you can't mix actives together would run screaming from this product, but I personally feel comfortable using vitamin C in this formula because it's been specific specifically formulated by chemists who know the certain percentages to use to be able to mix all of these ingredients together and who are able to stabilize the pH so that it's effective. I don't like talking about pH on my channel because in reality, it's a very complex topic and a lot of people like to be like, oh, I don't use products that have this pH or that pH, when in reality, pH is not very black and white either and it really comes down to how it was formulated, the way that the chemists made it, what other ingredients are used, but pH is important to consider when you're mixing a lot of different active products on your face which is why I feel more comfortable using a product like this than I would using a separate retinol, a separate niacinamide, separate vitamin C, et cetera, et cetera, all together because you're able to ensure that the pH of your skin and the experience is going to be much more enjoyable and there's going to be way less of a risk of sensitivity and irritation just by using something like this. Now, what is niacinamide okay to mix with? Now, I think salicylic acid and niacinamide are a great combination because they work well to not only reduce the oiliness and excess sebum, but also to exfoliate your skin. But sometimes using them at the same time can cause either some sensitivity or niacinamide and BHA products sometimes don't play nicely together because of the polymers and texture enhancers that are used. I say they can be used at the same time, but I think the perfect combination is to use a niacinamide serum in the morning and a BHA exfoliant at nighttime. Not only are you going to be getting the full benefits of the exfoliation because it's not going to have to deal with all the stuff that we go through throughout the day, but niacinamide is a great ingredient to use during the day to help control your oiliness and sebum production. Now what about niacinamide and retinol? A lot of people say that these can not be mixed. And I think in the past, I potentially have said that before. I can neither deny or confirm, but in doing research for this video, I actually did find out that niacinamide and retinol are great ingredients together. And it's usually recommended that they're mixed together because niacinamide is going to help reduce redness and irritation in the skin, which is a common side effect of using a powerful ingredient like retinol. Now, what about alpha hydroxy acids? AHAs like glycolic acid, lactic acid, and others. AHAs and niacinamide work great together. You can mix them without having to worry about any sensitivity or irritation irritation, they play very nicely. And again, the niacinamide is going to help with the redness and irritation that sometimes comes from using glycolic acid, which I know for my skin can leave a little bit of a tingly and sensitizing side effect. But niacinamide doesn't only come in serums, it can also be found in moisturizers like the niacinamide gel cream from Notorium, which is nice if you are going to be using like a retinol or a vitamin C treatment and you don't want to go in with too many serums. This is kind of a great way for getting good bang for your buck. But I will say I wanted to love this product so much because I was like, oh my god, finally a niacinamide gel cream. This this is what I've been waiting for. But this made my skin burn so bad. And it's not because there's any bad ingredients in it, because honestly, looking at the ingredient list, I thought it was amazing. But for some reason, my personal skin doesn't like it. So it didn't work for me, but that doesn't mean it won't work for you. Because like I said before, I like the ingredients. So this is a great way if you are using alternative treatments and you want to mix niacinamide with those, of getting all those benefits in one. Now, can you mix BHAs with AHAs? Absolutely. This is a great combination. And actually brands frequently mix the two types of ingredients together because they work really 
really well to just exfoliate your skin like crazy. Typically products that have both AHAs and BHAs are really gonna give you the ultimate glow and transformation overnight and are well tolerated to be used like a few times a week, I'd say two to three times a week, but are some of my favorites because you just get all the benefits in one. But you can use an AHA focus product and a BHA focus product. Just make sure that they aren't at too high of concentrations or that you aren't using them too frequently, which will up that sensitivity. Now, how about retinol and AHAs or BHAs? Technically, you can mix them together, but I personally do not recommend it. Retinol helps with the skin turnover, helping your body to produce more skin cells, and exfoliation helps to shed its excess skin cells. Using them at the same time can be effective, but you are risking over exfoliating your face and just using too many treatments at once, which can increase potential sensitivity. Now, some people say that you absolutely cannot mix them together. That's probably the most common myth that I see. That is not true. You can use them at the same time. I just only recommend it if you have been using retinol for a long time, you've been using exfoliants for a long time, you've never seen sensitivity and you want to try something new. Yes, you can. But I personally think the perfect combination for someone who is very experienced with skincare is to use retinol one night and to exfoliate the other night. And just to alternate that, it's going to be a beautiful combination because one night your skin is producing more skin cells and the next night you're going to be shedding those excess skin cells. And that's honestly the combination that completely transformed my skin. Now retinol can be found in alternative forms. For example, Naturium has their retinol serum, their retinol cream, and their retinol oil. Now personally, I like to use retinol creams, the one I've been using and enjoying so far, because retinol tends to leave your skin a little bit dry afterwards, and I feel like a cream is just the best way to be able to ensure that your skin is going to be dry afterwards. But again, any formula works. I just personally prefer creams, but you have those options in case you do want to use an additional hydrating moisturizer or additional treatment like a niacinamide serum. You have those options available. And honestly, I've been liking this one so far. With retinol, it does take time to see the results, but I'm excited to continue using this as it's formulated with hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, and it's a nice hydrating formula. And this one has Bakuchiol, which is a really cool ingredient that I've been really interested in lately because in one study, it was shown that Bakuchiol has the same restorative effects as retinol, but with less irritation. Now that doesn't mean it's a replacement for retinol because retinol has tons of research and Bakuchiol does not, but I like that it's a combination of both in this really powerful formula so I can be getting as much anti-aging and reparative action as possible. And then one final active ingredient, don't worry boo, we didn't forget about you, benzoyl peroxide, which is a common alternative ingredient to salicylic acid that's incredible for getting rid of acne and acne scars and it's typically found in a cleanser form, which is usually where I recommend it. When you use benzoyl peroxide in a cleanser, you can use additional treatment ingredients in the rest of your skincare routine, although I wouldn't go too crazy with salicylic acid so that you don't overly strip your skin. I, however, wouldn't recommend mixing benzoyl peroxide in a cream form with other types of leave-on treatments. The reason being that benzoyl peroxide is pretty powerful and it's also a very intense brightening agent. And I just think it'd be better to alternate days that you are using it and then use your intense treatments like vitamin C, retinol, and salicylic acid on other days. Oh my lord, I don't think I've ever deep dived this much in a video. Whew, that was a little intense and kind of all over the place. I hope you guys followed. <laughs> but as you can see, the main message throughout this video is saying that technically you can mix your actives, but I recommend being careful and being safe about it. If you want to mix actives, go right on ahead. Just make sure that you're being very deliberate in how you introduce them into your routine, how often you use them, and how you apply them. I hope this video was informative. I hope it didn't get too confusing. If you guys do have any questions or more points or recommendations that you want to make, leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Remember, I welcome feedback and corrections or advice. That's something that's so important to my channel, just as long as you're respectful about it. Thank you so much again to Notorium for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested in any of those products, they will all be in the description box below. If you were to choose one, I highly recommend the Niacinamide Serum. That one is just, oh, it's the best one. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.